Hi guys! Today we're going to look at how to create a reusable health system that allows the player to take damage from the enemies. We're going to split this into two parts. In this first part, we'll create the component for managing the player's health. Then in the second part, we'll add a health bar to the UI so we can see how much damage we've taken. OK, we'll start with this scene that has several enemies that wander around and chase the player if it gets too close. We created this in our 2D top-down shooter series, so take a look if you want to know how it was done. Alternatively, you can download this project by supporting us on Patreon. All the links you need can be found in the description. OK, let's start by adding a script to manage the player's health. We'll navigate to the Game Scripts folder. Then we'll click the plus button and add a new folder. We'll call this Health. Then we'll open this folder and add a new script. We'll call this Health Controller. We created a new folder for this rather than using the player specific one, as this is going to be generic enough to be used for the enemies as well in the future. We'll drag this script onto the player to assign it. Then we'll double click the script to open it in the editor. First of all, we'll delete the default start and update methods. Then we'll add a private float field to hold the current health. We'll add another for the maximum health value. We'll make both of these serializable so they can be set in the inspector. Next, we'll add a public property to get the remaining health percentage. This will come in useful when we're displaying the health bar later. To calculate the percentage, we'll divide the current health by the maximum. Then we'll add a public method to take damage and remove some health. We'll take the amount of damage as a parameter. Then we'll subtract this amount from the current health. We also need to add some checks in here to stop the health going into a negative value. First of all, we'll check if the current health is zero. If it is, there's no more health to remove, so we'll just return from the method. After we've taken the health away, we need to make sure it hasn't gone below zero. If it has, we'll set it to zero. Next, we'll create a similar method to be able to add health. We won't use this method in this video, but it'll be useful later on when we add health collectibles. In here, we'll check if the current health is already at the maximum. If it is, there's nothing to do, so we'll return. Then we'll add the specified amount. After we've done this, we need to check we haven't gone over the maximum. If we have, we'll set the current health to the maximum value. OK, let's save this script and switch back to Unity. We'll select the player in the hierarchy and set the current and maximum health values to 100. Now that the player has some health, we need a way for the enemies to take it away. To do this, we'll navigate to the Enemy Scripts folder and add a new script. We'll call this Enemy Attack. Then we'll double click to open it in the editor. In here, we'll delete the default methods. Then we'll add a serialized float field for the amount of damage we want to inflict. We want to inflict damage whenever the enemy is in contact with the player. To do this, we'll add the on collision stay 2D method. This will be called every frame the enemy's colliding with something. In here, we need to check if it's the player we've collided with. To do this, we'll try to get the player movement component from the collision object.
If we find it, we know it's the player. To inflict damage, we need access to the health controller, so we'll get it from the player. Now we can call the take damage method, passing in the amount of damage to inflict. Let's save this and switch back to Unity. We'll navigate to the enemy prefab. Then we'll click add component and add the enemy attack script. We'll set the damage amount to 10 and press play to try it out. We'll collide with a few enemies. Then if we select the player in the inspector, we can see the current health has now dropped to zero. The next thing to do is kill the player when they run out of health. Let's stop the game and switch back to the health controller script to do this. We could add some code in here to kill the player, but then this script would be tied to the player and we couldn't use it for anything else in the future. A better way is to use events. Events can be fired when certain things happen, such as the health reaching zero. Then other scripts can subscribe to these events and take some action. Let's specify that we want to use the Unity Engine Events namespace. Then we'll create a public Unity event that'll fire when the health reaches zero. We'll call this on died. A Unity event is similar to a C Sharp event, but it allows you to configure the subscribers in the inspector. We'll invoke this event in the take damage method if the health has reached zero. So now when the health reaches zero, this event will fire, telling all its subscribers that the player has died. OK, let's save this and switch back to Unity. We'll select the player in the hierarchy. Now we can click the plus button on the on died event to add a subscriber. When the player dies, we want it to stop moving. To do this, we'll drag the player into the object slot. Then we can find the player movement script and select the enabled property. We'll leave the checkbox unticked to indicate we want it to be disabled. So now, when the health reaches zero, this subscriber will be called and will disable the player movement script. Next, we'll do the same for the player shoot script. We'll add a new subscriber. We'll drag the player in and disable the script. This will stop the player shooting when they die. We'll add one more subscriber. We'll drag the player in again. And this time we'll disable the collider. This will allow the enemies to walk over the player once they've died. Let's press play to give this a go. When the player comes in contact with an enemy, it freezes instantly. We can no longer move or shoot and the enemies can walk over us. So the player has died how we wanted, but just a bit quicker than expected. This is because the player is taking damage every frame that it's in contact with an enemy. We start with 100 health, and the enemy inflicts 10 damage every frame, so it only takes 10 frames to get the health down to zero. To fix this, we're going to add a period of invincibility after taking damage, so the health doesn't drain so quickly. Let's stop the game and switch back to the health controller script. In here, we'll add a public boolean property to indicate whether we can currently take damage. We'll call this is invincible. Then in the take damage method, we'll check if this value is true. If it is, we'll return from the method without inflicting any damage. Next, we need to create a script to turn on invincibility when the player takes damage. We'll save this script and switch back to Unity. 
We'll go to the Health Scripts folder and add a new script. We'll call this Invincibility Controller. We'll drag it onto the player and double click to open it. This is going to be a component that we can use to trigger invincibility for a period of time. This could be after taking damage or after picking up an invincibility collectible. To enable invincibility we need access to the health controller. We'll create a field for this. Then we'll add the awake method and get the health controller component. Next, we'll add a public method to start the invincibility. We'll take the desired duration as a parameter. So we want to set the invincibility to true, wait for the duration and then set it back to false. For this, we're going to use a coroutine. We have a dedicated video on coroutines if you want more detail but basically it allows us to have code that executes across multiple frames. We'll create a private method for the invincibility coroutine. For a coroutine to work, it needs to return I enumerator. We'll also take the duration as a parameter again. Inside the method, we'll set the isInvincibility value to true. We can then tell the coroutine to wait for a period of time by doing yield return wait for seconds. We'll specify we want to wait for the duration. Then we'll set the is invincible value back to false. Finally, we need to start the coroutine in the start invincibility method we created earlier. We can do this by calling the start coroutine method, passing in the coroutine we want to start. We now have a script that can turn on invincibility for a period of time. The next thing to do is activate this when the player takes damage. For this we're going to need another event. We'll switch to the health controller and add a new event called on damaged. We'll invoke this event in the take damage method. We want to do this if the player has taken damage but hasn't died. To do this, we'll add an else statement to this if block. Then we'll invoke the event in here. Next, we need to create a script to handle the new event. Let's save the scripts and switch back to Unity. We'll navigate to the player scripts folder and add a new script. We'll call this Player Damaged Invincibility. We'll drag it onto the player and double click to open it. Let's start by deleting the default methods. Then we'll add a new public method to start the player invincibility. This is the method that we're going to trigger from the on damaged event. To be able to start the invincibility, we need a reference to the invincibility controller component. We'll add a field for this. Then we'll add the awake method. In here, we'll get the component and assign it to the field. We also need to know how long the invincibility should last. We'll add a serialised float field for this. Now we have everything we need. In the public method, we'll start the invincibility, passing in the duration.
That's it for this script. Let's save it and switch back to Unity. We'll click the player in the hierarchy. Then we'll add a subscriber to the on damaged event. We'll drag the player into the object slot. Then we'll find the player damaged invincibility component and select the method to start the invincibility. We also need to set the duration of the invincibility. We'll set this to 3 seconds and press play to try it out. Now we can see the health dropping in blocks of 10 with a gap in between. In the next video in this series we'll add a health bar to show how much health is remaining. If you want to be alerted when this one's out then subscribe and click the bell icon. If you have any questions or feedback on this video then please add it into the comments. A big thank you to all our patrons, we really appreciate you helping to support the channel. If you'd like to help and also get access to the source code, you can find details in the description. Thanks guys!